Oh, the energy sector in Australia is evolving rapidly. I mean, we've seen uh, huge numbers of uh, large-scale solar farms trying to connect to our network, more than double our current peak demand in connection requests, um, which certainly the network can't, couldn't cope with if everything uh, turned up. We're seeing penetrations of rooftop solar increasing, and we're seeing small numbers of people starting to connect batteries to their, uh, to, to their houses behind a meter. We're seeing regulations changing and market mechanisms changing. The, the NEG has been introduced, the National Energy Guarantee, that's still being discussed through Parliament. Uh, the Australian energy regulators changing their rules, as well as um, the, the market operator and uh, finding different ways of doing things to adapt to this rapidly changing environment. The energy sector is evolving rapidly. There is, there is a raft of things happening mostly, mostly linked to decarbonisation, so the transition from centralised fossil fuel generation to decentralised scale and behind the metre renewables. That's, that is a trend that is unstoppable. It's, a, it's simply a question of how long it takes for the transition to take place and what the ultimate, the ultimate extent of renewables in the energy mix is. The first thing about coming from the UK that I noticed uh, in comparison to the European market is the scale of the scale of Australia and the small number of people in it, to be honest. Uh, the population density is very low and the networks are strung out uh, across huge geographies. The, the other challenge is that within Europe, renewables have, um, have gradually entered the system under subsidies over a long period of time and that's given people the chance to create the systems that support those uh, introductions. Whereas in Australia, uh, renewables weren't on, on, on the agenda for a long time and then all of a sudden when they are economic to install they became onto the system, so exploded rather rapidly. Uh, so businesses have been chasing to catch up. The growth of renewable energy in Australia is unstoppable. The growth of renewable energy in Australia is very much linked to the fact that Australia has an abundance of sunlight, wind and available land along with a reasonably large electricity market to, to consume the, the, the generated electrons. And so the, the renewables market in Australia is growing very strongly. We've seen incredible interest from renewables developers over the last couple of years. We have applications for connections from scale renewable developments far, far in excess of our current network load, which is extraordinary. And inevitably, we will have a lot, Essential Energy will have a lot of renewable installations and developments across our network footprint that will come up over the next five to 10 years. Oh, the role of a network in future changes absolutely fundamentally. Historically, networks have been uh, putting in generation at one end and, and providing energy to customers at the other with a fairly straightforward linear system. You know, designed fat at one end and thin at the other. Now we're seeing large connections, generation connections, adding to the thin end of our network that it's not been designed for, trying to push electrons the other way up the network. So we have to respond to that. We need greater visibility of how our network operates in real time. We need to be able to respond to changes in supply and demand by, uh, by managing demand or increasing supply. Uh, we need to be much more uh, active in the physical operation of the network on a, in a real-time basis. So it will fundamentally shift everything we do. In order to operate in this way, we're going to need to have much, much better data, uh, much improved systems and, and a huge number of different capabilities in the business. From a network perspective, the main challenges Essential Energy faces, firstly, is ensuring the network provides, provides the service required by customers at a reasonable price. Secondly, it is the transition from centralised fossil fuel generation through a transmission network into the distribution network to a much more dynamic situation where we've got customers who are generating electricity behind the meter and exporting, and, and generally all at the same time. We've got scale renewables emerging on the network. And so zone subs that once upon a time had a purely one-way flow of electrons through them are now seeing, seeing two-way flows or negative loads at different times. And that has, presents enormous challenges from a network perspective. 
the capacity of individual feeders has been predicated or designed upon the anticipated end customer load. Whereas now the capacity of those feeders is actually driven by both customer load and potential generation feeding back into the feeder, which gives rise to a vastly different set of engineering challenges from a network perspective. So the network's already evolving. Uh, we've already got um, about 800 megawatts of, of large-scale solar installed on the network. We've got about 30% penetration of rooftop solar, uh, and we're seeing people start to create, uh, put batteries behind the meter. Um, we're seeing retailers introduce smart meters, uh, removing the old dumb meters, and we're seeing uh, other players starting to think about entering the market and doing things like blockchain trading, peer-to-peer, -peer and uh, creating virtual power plants and other such, uh, other such things. So it's already evolving and that uh, evolution is only going to increase in speed um, and uncertainty of the, the end game direction. Really it takes us to a place where we need to be a distribution system operator rather than a distribution network operator and we need to move from just simply switching the network to controlling the network, uh, providing commercial services across uh, nodes and, and giving the opportunity to trade our way out of capacity issues rather than build our way out of capacity issues. So a fundamental shift uh, that is going to really revolutionise the way networks are run. So essential energy are shifting from asset maintenance to asset management. We have um, a historic uh, deficit in our technology that we're trying to overcome by uh, looking at the way we, we structure our data and making sure we get it fit for good asset management in the future. So making sure we've got complete, accurate, robust, timely data in our systems that we can make use to make good decisions. Um, structuring our data in the right way, putting it on good systems and uplifting our capability, our personal capability to work as good asset managers in a, in a risk-based manner is our first sort of port of call. Beyond that, we've then got to understand the capability of our system better and put in place tools and, and that support uh, an understanding of real-time energy flows and the ways of mitigating uh, capacity issues and uh, loading issues and power quality on the network. So a massive uplift of capability um, from quite a low base um, in, in a very short space of time is going to give us an enormous challenge but one that's going to be absolutely fantastic to get through. From asset maintenance to asset management is a critical one. It's one we are embarking on with great enthusiasm. And what it, what it actually comes down to is ensuring ultimately we have an, a long-term long or whole-of-life asset management plan that goes from the sort of 40-year asset management plan right down to the day of operations to ensure that as much as possible the work we do on our network is not reactive. It's actually planned and prescribed and it ends up being exactly the right amount of work at the right time so the network can operate in the most efficient manner possible at the lowest possible cost.